Hello, everybody. You are behind the scenes with Sacred Harmony. I am Brian with Janet and Theresa. We have a great half hour of music and more with our special guest, Joseph Reed. We're going to have a great time together. Let's get started. Behind the scenes, there's an unseen head. He knows just what he's doing when he's working his plan. Even when it seems like there's no way out, God is up to something you can shout out. Welcome back, everybody, to Behind the Scenes with Sacred Harmony. We are here with a, a dynamic guest. I don't think he would mind me using the word dynamic. He uh -huh. is currently the program director for Singing News Radio. Would you all make welcome Joseph oh, Reed? Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Di you, Joseph. For dynamic. Being on the show. Dynamic. Do you like that? That's pretty bold. I th <laughs> I'm okay with it. Well, you are dynamic. Thank you. Because yeah. you've had, uh, you, in, in your career of ministry, mm -hmm. you've been able to do a lot of different aspects mm -hmm. of ministry. Yes. From singing to evangelism mm -hmm. to uh, radio and other media. So tell me, what, what, is, what captures the essence of Joseph Reed in any of those categories? Well, if you, if you see me, you've likely met my mother because uh, I get my outgoing personality from her. My dad's more the reserved person. He was a missionary to Jamaica, pastor evangelist, and so I was raised in church and ministry my whole life. 
And I was the guy that, I was the youngest of us three boys. Uh, the older two, my middle brother, didn't really take an interest in evangelism, though he was uh, very active in, in church. And my oldest brother, Sam, is a high-functioning autistic. So it was me who was on the road with dad all the time, uh, traveling, and most of my school was spent in homeschool. Mm. Uh, before homeschool was cool, by the way, I was. Did you graduate homeschool. the top of your class? I did. I was the only one. Yeah, valedictorian's what I yeah, heard. That's right. I, I, I spoke to myself. I, I was pretty good. I encouraged myself. Yeah, I, I, that's yeah. what the Bible says. That's to right. Do. Encourage yeah. yourself. In As the iron life. sharpens iron. That's right. That's right. So I, I started in ministry early on, and then kind of stumbled into radio at a very young age. My dad had a radio broadcast on several local radio stations, which was very common back then in the 80s. And I'm from Bristol, Tennessee, so he was on a station called WZAP, which yep. is still active today. And I would go with him to take the tapes uh, for him to turn in his radio broadcast. You take what? The tapes. Ta <laughs> That's tapes. what I said, tapes. <laughs> Literal cassette tape. We don't want to date you or anything. No, 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 not at all. Well, <laughs> moving on. So the, <laughs> we had a realistic, my dad had a realistic uh, Radio Shack recorder with one of those small mics and, and had a setup that he recorded his broadcast with. And he would play a song at the beginning of the broadcast and hold the microphone up to a speaker. You know, so it, it was old school all wow. day. But when I walked in there, the program director of that station at the time was a young man named Greg Hutchins. Mm -hmm. And Greg has since, uh, you know, become uh, iconic in the Southern Gospel Music Radio mm -hmm. business. And uh, Greg grabbed me one day and he said, you know what, I need a commercial done and I need a young guy on there. So you're a young kid, would you do it? And I was like, of course. Mm -hmm. And so he <laughs> took me in the production room and we recorded a local commercial. And uh, that, that was the day that I thought, I want to do this. You know, I was so young at the time. Uh, I was about 11 years old, and I thought this is what I want to do. The equipment, everything. I've always been techie, even when I was younger. And so it just so happened my dad was on another local station called WBCV, which ended up now as WIGN, still active. And he had a radio broadcast there. Well, the owner loved dad's voice, and he said, hey, would you be interested in doing a morning show here and being a DJ to my dad. He said, I'll work with your ministry when you have to be gone, that's fine, but uh, I'd love to have you. He and my dad had become quite good friends. And so it was that I would go in to work with my dad um, and I would sit in that production room while he was on the air and I would just play records. That's what we had at the time, cassettes and records. Yeah. And, and I just fell in love with Southern Gospel music at the time. and. It was then when I was 12 years old, I was doing production, commercials, liners, things like that. And then the station owner came to me and he said, I've talked to your dad. He said, you can get licensed by the FCC, which was required at the time. Okay. When you were 13, mm. he said, I'll uh, take care of getting your license if you'd be interested in being a DJ here. And so I was ecstatic. And so I started my actual first job as a disc jockey uh, on a 5,000 watt AM station when I was 13 years old. Okay. Mm. And I've been in and around radio or broadcasting uh, at some level almost ever since, mm. you know, and that radio was what kind of led me into gospel music in the industry as a, as a radio promoter, uh, as, as an artist, uh, singer, songwriter. It just has, you know, there's a big umbrella above me and uh, I'm very thankful for, for all of those paths, it's really interesting how I really believe that God can take something like that and just have a map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he's got it all set up and he knew the desires of my heart and never would I have dreamed when I picked up a singing news magazine back in 1986, I believe it was the first copy I ever saw. And uh, all these years later, I'd be uh, heading up the singing news radio network, which is a radio network that's on about 50 radio stations across the country and we have a huge streaming audience of about a quarter of a million people and so that's that led me back to greg hutchins all those years later because he was the morning show guy at singing news so it was full circle since then greg is retired but uh, so i took over the morning show slot there so uh, in all of that i've i've just 
tried to take my personality and weave it into every aspect of my life, whether it be doing MC work or hosting a show, and I host shows on television as well. And I just try to be authentic and real and be myself. It's amazing, you know. You know, this show's called Behind the Scenes, mm -hmm. and and we have a song about that. Uh, but it really talks about how God is working behind the scenes for our good, yeah. and then amazing how He puts us mm -hmm. right where He wants us to be, and and, and starts that that progression mm -hmm. maybe years before and as you yeah. said who knew in 1986 when you picked up that singing news magazine radio mm -hmm. you would be at singing news radio today as the program director. yeah never would have dreamed it don't deserve it you know uh, I appreciate so much the love that God has for his people that in spite of our faults and failures he still directs our path the key here is because of self-will you know we can make decisions that can go contrary to his will obviously but ultimately if we have the right heart and we have the right motive then god is going to honor that and he has always known my heart to this day i still say that every time i pray god please look at my heart because sometimes i don't even feel um, as good as my, I know my heart really is, yeah. you know, because of my humanity. Yeah. Uh, I, I've never been a guy that's competitive. I don't have an ego. I'm not arrogant. I'm just very, very normal guy. And it causes me sometimes to feel unworthy you know, of, of the goodness of God. But I'm very thankful. I'm thankful to be here with you guys yeah. today. We're happy to have yes, you. Yes, mm. you, you know, because, you know, our, our timing is not God's. And we, we think if something mm. doesn't happen in a week or in a month and in two years, yeah. well, that, that, that prayer just didn't make it beyond the ceiling. Yeah. Sometimes his, his plan comes to fruition many, many years down the road. Mm -hmm. And our humanness loses sight of that, I think. That's right. Uh, but That's God, right. God is not confined by time the way that we are, and I'm thankful mm -hmm. for that. Well, you know, that's interesting you mentioned that because I remember being a teenager so engulfed in Southern Gospel music and the singing cooks and the singing echoes yeah. and Gold City and the Kingsman. I stumbled on a record that was called Radically Saved by a contemporary Christian artist named Carmen. This oh, yeah. This was in 1989. And I fell in love with that record, and I was just obsessed with it, listening to it, the energy that Carmen had. And I remember my dad coming into my room, what are you listening to? <laughs> That's rock and roll music. Yeah. He, he, he was fine with it, yeah. but it wasn't his yeah. uh, cup of tea. And hey, then, speaking, of, uh, uh, speaking of songs, yeah, yeah. You, will you sing one for us? Uh, yeah. I, it may, yes. I don't know if it's Carmen's song. I don't know what you've got. It's but, not. Yeah, I'm excited it's to it's hear. not, but lis listen. I'm ready to sing, All right. and if you're ready to hear it, let's do Would it. Would you all like to hear yes. Joseph sing a song? Yeah. Let's, yes. Let's do it. How long does a red rose last? Will the cloud disappear once it passes, or will we see it again on the other side? And how long will I wear this ring? Ain't the calendar such a cruel, cruel thing as it counts away the days of our lives? It's all we get down here. Twenty-eight thousand days to say I love you and make a smile overcome a tear. What will your life say in four thousand Sundays? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust So can the world depend on us To make a difference Every chance we get Was that grudge really worth The time it wasted here on earth What would happen if we'd forgive and forget 
4,000 Sundays If we're lucky It's all we get down here 28,000 days to say I love you And make a smile overcome a tear What will your life say In 4,000 Sundays Cause I refuse to be stuck in a rut Of what was and is and is to come what can I do? What will we do with 4,000 Sundays? If we're lucky, it's all we get down here. That's 28,000 days to say I love you. God who holds the number of our years What will your life say When you see his face Four thousand Sundays Four thousand Sundays Welcome back, everybody, to Behind the Scenes with Sacred Harmony. We're going to continue with our guest, Joseph Reed. Thank Man, you. brother, that was a fantastic oh, song. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Spe you. So, clearly, you've got lots of musical heritage and influences. Mm. You were telling us about your relationship with Carmen. Oh, yeah, it's a special yeah. One. About the record, Radically Saved. Well, yeah. We were talking about how God maps out things, and years later, uh, I was able to uh, be hired by Carmen and be on his uh, tour uh, for about two years. And uh, I was his tour publicist and also worked with uh, volunteers on site at each of the venues. And uh, that was a very incredible experience for me. I was able to be around Carmen all the time, uh, traveling literally across the country. And so that's another cool thing of how something that really made an impact on my childhood, ended up uh, smiling back at me later on, many years later. Isn't that cool? It is. And he passed away a couple of he years did. ago. He did. He passed away while I was working for him. It was, it was tragic. It uh, broke my heart. He was a wonderful person. And if anybody, uh, it, it, people ask me how was he, he always treated me just like family. And uh, we, never, we never had a crossword. And um, he, was, he was a very encouraging person. Uh, he knew a lot about scripture and we talked a lot about the Bible, but most importantly, every, after every concert, his first question would be, uh, how many people got saved tonight? Because we kept track of how many people came to the altar. Nothing else mattered. That was the first thing he asked yeah. every night. Yeah. True story. Right. Yeah. What's the best road story with Carmen uh, mm. that you've had? Well, <laughs> there's several. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you a strange one. We did have a woman show up. If you're watching, may God bless you. But uh, we did have a woman. This is, you know, kind of crazy. She showed up in a wedding dress, and she said, uh, "She said I came here to marry Carmen tonight." No way. And I said, "Well, that you can't. <laughs> He's already married." And I thought, I don't know if she was just being f funny. She was probably just being facetious. But he did have such a. <laughs> loving fans and and adoring fans that uh, and some of them were just uh, super fans if you will so yeah. so I'm sure she was just being silly with us and and came in like that but uh, that that is a very strange one uh, for sure first thing that came to my mind <laughs> that's a good one yeah yeah well you would want me to tell that <laughs> <laughs> bless you Carmen <laughs> yeah. so we want you to sing one more mm. uh, and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about this song that you're gonna do next well thank you yeah this song means a lot to me I, I never had a grandparent growing up but I had some people that were like my own grandparents uh, that I was raised around and and they uh, they passed away with Alzheimer's. Uh, uh, all three of these grandparent figures in my life did, and it, it was very tragic to see them go through that. One of my biggest 
heroes, Jimmy Epperson, uh, up in East Tennessee, one of my hero pastors. Uh, he also had dementia and uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, so I've seen it impact so many people, and so I wrote this song. Oh, uh, I can't wait to hear uh, it. About yeah. that. Awesome. Let's hear it. Sometimes when time slips away It can leave so much more Than could ever be replaced Treasured moments of the heart They have faded in our minds Like a priceless work of art But should that happen to me If you look into my eyes and they don't recognize I can't make my lips recall your name Have no fear if my memory disappears The love I have for you will never change I promise to always love you Even if I get forgetful If my love for you runs deeper Than the moments that we share There's no cross that it So if I can't remember what you don't forget Doesn't mean I love you any less If you look into my eyes And they don't recognize And I can't make my lips recall your I have for you will never change and I promise to always love you even if I get forgetful I promise to always love you cool i love that so you wrote that i wrote that actually for my wife uh, just to say you know if, th if this is something that ever happens i just want you to know um, it, it it doesn't change what was in my heart for yeah. all, all of those years yeah. yeah you know ministry exists in a lot of different ways as we've said from singing to being behind the pulpit being on the radio but you've yeah. got a most current testimony and yeah. ministry that God has given you. Would you, we've got a couple of minutes here left well, at the end of the program. You know, and I appreciate you asking me to bring this up. It was uh, about 16 months ago, I was uh, diabetic, extremely unhealthy, uh, morbidly obese. Uh, my doctor was very concerned about my health, the history of some heart issues. And so I just set up one day after I was getting ready and had literally a, a breakdown of, of emotions. I was tired of being overweight and tired of being tired and, and miserable and unhealthy. And so I started a journey that day and haven't looked back. Over the past 16 months, I've lost 122 pounds. Fantastic. And I'm so thankful for the courage that God gave me. I've done it all based on uh, the science of fitness and nutrition. I ended up starting school a year ago 
and uh, have since been dual certified as a personal trainer mm -hmm. and a nutrition coach and I'm still going to school to get a certificate to be a certified nutritionist and I'll be done with that this summer so very excited about that and I'm out there helping other people who are on this journey I have several people that I'm helping to uh, to, to get their life back to get their health back and yeah. thankfully it has made a big difference in my life no longer diabetic uh, my blood pressure is under control my cholesterol looks better than it has in decades and I'm thankful Sometimes it. there's purpose in the things that we go through, and, yes. and that, that's a testimony to yeah. that. Your story mm -hmm. is going to help other people as well. And we need people to understand you can do this. Yes. It is possible. Yes. And I want to encourage anyone out there, if you need to make a big change in your life, yes. believe in yourself. Thank you. You all come on back and see us next time behind the scenes with Sacred Harmony.